This week, the January 2022 update for Zwift has landed across all platforms. And in addition to the regular bug fixes and other things, we see some key roadmap features slowly rolling out. Those being Zwift clubs and the new Zwift home screen. Those two important features deserving a video of their own today, I'll quickly skim over the top in addition to what's dropped with the January 2022 update. So a quick summary of what's new this week. There are two new routes for Neokio on Mercury Islands. There's no new tarmac, but there are two new route badges to get. There's a Wahoo climbing mission and another workout of the week. Devices running Windows version 7 or 8 are no longer supported by Zwift, so you need to be on Windows 10 or above. There's been enough warning on this one, so unfortunately, if you're not running Windows 10 and you're running something earlier, you're gonna see this message here. There's a new Zwift Windows launcher, removing a few of the niggles people have seen popping up on the screen trying to update Zwift or launch Zwift in recent times. The Zwift Clubs feature starts rolling out very slowly. And the new Zwift home screen has been slowly rolling out to a very small subset of users before rolling out to everybody else. I'll give you a quick whip around of that too in this video. Okay, let's get stuck into more details on these. Okay, diving into all the details on the updates this month, we'll start off over at ZwiftInsider.com looking at the update 1.21 post they've put up recently. Starting off with the new Mercury Island routes here, we first have the Castle to Castle route. 22.4 kilometers with a little bit of climbing there. And we also have a shorter route called Twilight Harbor, just under seven kilometers and 33 meters of climbing. Nice and quick and a good one for a quick race on there. Now for a sneak peek on how those routes look with the new interface, I'll pull that up here. The scaling's a little bit off, but here's what you'll be looking at with the new interface when this is enabled. More details on this a little later in the video. Details of the Wahoo climbing mission are a little thin. I believe this will be properly announced on the 17th with sign up starting then too. But what we know so far is there will be a lot of climbing involved. There's various unlocks in game and some in real life prizes to win too. That takes place between January 24th to February 26th. Crank up the fan and probably grab yourself a bucket for this month's workout of the week. It's only short, 40 minutes, but there's a lot of red involved there. So good luck if you're going to be tackling this one this month. We can't say there wasn't enough warning on this one. It's time to retire that potato PC that's not running Windows 10 or above. This post from our friend Shuji over on the Zwift forums indicates what you'll see if you're running Windows 7 or Windows 8 and you try to start Zwift. The launcher will work, Zwift will not. So it's RIP Windows 7 and Windows 8 machines. Another important component of Zwift on Windows is the Zwift launcher, which sits down here in the tray. It should now be reading version 1.11. There's a post over on the Zwift forums outlining what 1.1.1 does and some of the bug fixes, which as I said at the start of the video, fixes a few of those niggles that people have been having starting Zwift or doing the updates on Zwift on Windows. I've been using this for a few days now and it has been smooth sailing on Windows 11. Onto a brief overview of a feature we've all been waiting for for a very, very long time. And this is Zwift Club functionality. If you're level 20 or above in cycling or at level 10 or above in running, you'll soon have the ability to add a club or create a club here within the companion app. I've created the GP Llama Cycling Club a little while back. I'll take you through creating a club here. So you can give your club a name, set the country, set the language, Set an option here of who can join, invitation only or ask to join or anybody can join. You can have cycling, running or both. And once created, you can create your own events. And these events do start in the proper starting pens. So the results are valid. Once your club has been created, you can then go about adding members up to 100 members at the moment. But you can also create events for anybody to join, members or not. A quick overview of creating an event. We go manage, create event. It'll give some suggestions of templates to create, but we can scroll down and build our own custom from any routes. Let's go to Mercury Islands. We'll scroll down and select a route to complete. Let's go CappaQuest. Click OK on that. And the options are to name the event, give it a date and time, put a description in. We can add different groups. So we can have A, B, C, D, and or E. We can assign a ride leader. We can assign sweepers. 
We could make it distance based. Two kilometers isn't really much. Duration defaults to one hour or laps if you're selecting the route and doing a route badge ride. And there's also some event settings down here where you can enable late join, event results, create women only events. And down below, you can change the visibility so only club members can join or anybody with the event link can join, which means any Zwifter can join your club event. Now, this is the functionality I've been waiting for a very, very long time to come around, and I can tell you it works very, very well. More on this functionality soon in a separate video. Okay, and finally today, a quick whip around of the new user interface as it stands now for the home screen. Now, this probably won't be exactly how it looks for everybody once it rolls out for everybody, but I thought I'd give everybody a sneak peek. Starting off with the connection tab there at the top, links us back through to the familiar pairing screen. That all looks pretty much the same. We can access our badges now without having to drop into the game and then go back to the menu. So the home screen allows us to access all the badges and scrolling down here, we get the achievements and missions and things. We can see those before dropping into the game. That's a good thing. And we can access the drop shop and garage before starting a ride. So if you're doing a fast ride on the flats, equip yourself with a TT bike or some fast wheels. If you're starting on the dirt, grab yourself a gravel bike or a mountain bike. Or if you want to change your kit, you can do this before starting your ride. Something a lot of users have been asking for for a very, very long time. It is possible with this new home screen setup. From the home screen, you can also get to your profile, your settings and switch to running if you forget your bike. Back over to the left hand side of the screen, we have some suggested events or the upcoming events, workouts, other suggestions for me to do. But we can also click along the top and go to the events coming up in the next 60 minutes and apply some filters there. So the Tour de Zwift Stage 2 is kicking off. We can filter on those. Or we can go back to all. We can also filter on whatever else is happening. Okay, so no Fondo is happening in the next 60 minutes. Group rides, group workouts, and we can find something to do coming up in the next 60 minutes. Clicking on any of those pulls out the details and shows us the groups that we can join for those events. If we want to do some free rides, click on the globe. It shows us our three guest worlds. And note along the top there, there's a lot more room for more than just three tabs. Hmm. Clicking on any of the routes shows us the route preview, which we saw earlier in the video. And you can also see the little green ticks next to them as well. Yorkshire, Innsbruck, Oh, I haven't done Dutchy Estate. I'm gonna have to fill two water bottles for that one and bring a fan. 4.9 kilometers to do, one day soon. Scrolling up and down, you can see how many routes there are there on Mytopia. And finally, over to workouts. That looks very much the same as it was in the past. So selecting any of those, hitting workout before starting your ride. And finally, just a quick look at the settings screen, which is scrollable. I'm sure there's a lot more room for more settings there. All the options still look very, very similar to last time. Now, just as a recap, this new home screen will be rolling out very slowly over the next weeks and months to all users across all platforms. What you see on your system may not be exactly what you're seeing here. I'm sure the scaling will change, but there's just a quick preview of what's coming up. So there we are, what's new for January 2022 on Zwift, what's landing on your system and what's soon to be landing on your system with those slow rollouts of those other key features. As always, if you found this one informative, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be alerted of new videos landing on this channel, and hit that membership button to show your support for what I'm up to here. It's much appreciated. Thanks for watching.